everyone, I had a new member join my crew this week. I purchased a Pygmalion Dolls Eta. As I mentioned in my doll plans at the end of last year, I really wanted to get another guy, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. I'd been eyeing the sculpts at Pygmalion Dolls website for a while, but was also considering a few other companies. When I saw Eta for sale on the secondhand market, I went ahead and committed. He's an absolutely gorgeous and realistic sculpt. He came on the Pygmalion Dolls TEIA 71 body, which makes him the largest and heaviest doll that I own, with two solid inches taller than Loxley, my Ippo House SID Dean. If I'm honest, I haven't quite figured out the body just yet. It came wired, and I'm struggling to try to get him into a seated position. Maybe I'll give it another go this week after I get some other projects done. I don't have anything that fits him except for the pair of sweats that I made for Loxley a few months back, but only because I made them too loose. I saw that Pygmalion Dolls had a free dress shirt pattern on their website. I decided to modify it to be a basic t-shirt so that he had something to wear that I can make relatively easily. I say relatively, but I don't know if I actually ended up saving any time over the dress shirt. I ended up using my computerized sewing machine for this project because I own a walking foot. I've also heard it called an even feed foot. This makes sewing stretchy material easier as it moves the layers of fabric at the same pace. Sometimes with the basic foot, the layers at the top move faster than the layers at the bottom which cause them to be askew. So while this made my fabric easier to work with, it complicated how I finished my seams. I own an overlocking foot as well on this machine, which I like to use to finish my seams over the simple zigzag. But in order to use it, I have to take the walking foot off, which actually requires me to unscrew it from the shank. I did my best to optimize when I could group my finishes together to minimize the switching, but I still did at least six swaps between the two presser feet. I also added more complexity by using my twin needle to hem the sleeves and bottom of the shirt, but it made the details on the shirt so nice. I think if I had a serger, then it would have been less cumbersome. Or if my Bernina had a walking foot, I could use my brother sewing machine for finishing since it has way more options for stitches. I don't know though. After toiling for nearly two hours, I managed to finish his shirt. Here he is borrowing Loxley's wig and pants. The fit is really nice and maybe the shirt is just a little on the short side. If I make this again, I would lengthen it as well as lowering the neckline. I'm pretty proud of my hems and top stitching as they line up fairly well. Small details like that make me feel like I'm progressing in my sewing. I hope to have more time to figure out the TEIA body. If I can't figure it out, I'm going to have to look for a replacement. And if that happens, I'll probably be making another shirt. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thank you for hanging out with me. Bye.